I made a video about digital night vision seven years ago, and in that video I said digital night vision would be here and pretty good in three to five years. <laughs> Now, in my defense, uh, two years ago, roughly, the Opsin was created by Psyonix, and it is a relatively uh, high-performance uh, and very capable digital night vision device. And two years ago, I reviewed that, and I gave it uh, a grade that is kind of in the medium. At the time, uh, it was about the same price as a PVS-14, giving you more features, but less overall sensitivity and performance. However, that was two years ago. In the last two years, a number of things have changed. The Psyonix Opsin has gotten some firmware upgrades that make it much better, dealing with some of the issues that we had at the time. But also, the cost has come way down. It is now about 1800 bucks, and the cost of a PVS-14 has gone up. This one that we sell here at T-Rex, gonna run you close to $4,000. So, with the changes in the market, uh, with the changes in the technology, with some of the new products on the market and some of the things that are coming around the corner, I think it's time for another reevaluation of what we got and some additional testing. <laughs> So, in addition to looking at this particular PVS-14, uh, the Psyonix Opsin with its new firmware, which uh, addresses some of the issues but still has the exact same sensor, still has the exact same processing power, etc., we're also going to be looking at the Hoplite Industries DNV9. Uh, this is an interesting device because its cost is $1,200. Uh, you can easily get three of these for the cost of a PVS-14, and this does not include uh, any mounting capability, and this has basically a J-arm with full articulation and some other stuff. Uh, if you compare these two digital units, um, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. This obviously wins on price. This has some better performance. This has a ton of features, like the ability to record and have GPS and compass and a bunch of stuff in a heads-up display, which this doesn't have. But in a way, not having those things makes this a much more streamlined device. There's fewer buttons. It's uh, much sleeker. Even though it's made out of a sturdier metal, it um, actually weighs a little bit less uh, and just feels a little bit more like this device. The optics and the eye box are a little bit more comfortable to use. So. We need to look at these things uh, and do some serious testing. But as we're looking at these specific devices, we're still talking about analog and digital as two concepts. When will digital actually be competitive with analog? Because when it comes to low light sensitivity and when it comes to speed, uh, there is no coming close to this. When it comes to battery efficiency, this thing is the winner uh, by a crazy factor. So the question is, uh, how are digital and analog going to stack up with the next generation of devices uh, that we're also going to talk about? Because digital and analog, uh, you should go back and watch that original video because we described the way that they work. and. They are so different, it's almost like not just two different kinds of animals, it's almost like the difference between animals and vegetables. Just totally different technology. And I've never really had a good analogy for that until this year. I have finally found the perfect analogy for analog and digital night vision. This right here is a digital rear view mirror. It's a screen connected to uh, a little camera in the back. And compared to an analog mirror, uh, it is drastically inferior in certain ways. When it's super bright out, like it is today, the screen doesn't get quite bright enough, so I gotta adjust my eyes uh, back and forth. And then at night, the screen doesn't get quite dim enough. And then there's also just the fact that it's a screen, not a reflection of real life. So I'm looking out like 80 feet ahead of me, 100 feet ahead of me, and then I have to quickly shift to two feet away. So my depth perception and my eye focus is constantly changing to keep up. Then there's the fact that the camera itself in the back uh, at night doesn't see as well as my actual eyes. So it's very much like the digital night vision, analog night vision comparison. 
but there are some advantages to the digital camera. Uh, if you have a digital camera in the back, you can get angles that you cannot get from the front and you can overlay stuff on top. So this has GPS and it's telling me my speed and it's recording everything that I am doing, which is handy if you want to have a record uh, of your driving and how safe you were being when you shot a video. Uh, there's a camera pointing forwards and a camera pointing backwards and GPS stamps and time stamps and all of the recording stuff that you would want in a dash cam. But then you also have some other features as well. There's a little feature in here that recognizes other uh, vehicles and tries to estimate how far away they are, which is not the most useful thing in the world, but I mean, it's there kind of handy because you don't really have the depth perception. So there are things that this can do that a regular mirror cannot do. And in certain vehicles like giant delivery vans, this is kind of the only way to solve that problem. And then in other vehicles, like let's say you were in a race car, you would want to avoid this and go for the solution that is the lightest and the fastest no questions asked. The other issue where they kind of fall apart in this analogy is cost because this is hundreds of dollars and an analog mirror is really cheap. Uh, but now that I think about it, the way that OEM parts are priced, uh, maybe analog is still the more expensive option. And that's really the other reason that I want to do some more testing and some more experimenting with this stuff. In the past, we've looked at night vision almost entirely from the perspective of direct action, shooting with lasers, doing stuff on the range, and that's great. However, there are opportunities for digital night vision to be a valuable tool today, even though it can't match this speed and performance uh, of the analog tubes. Um, and I want to tell you guys that uh, before we start on the testing process, I am biased. Uh, you guys probably know that I am biased because we sell this PVS-14. This is assembled for us by Nocturnality and I'm a huge fan of Nocturnality. Scott is a friend of mine and I would love for you to buy this device. However, I'm also biased towards Psyonix. Uh, the Psyonix device has its issues, sure, but the company is really interesting. Uh, they have moved from uh, the sort of military industrial complex being a contractor for large DOD projects over to the citizen defense industry. And I am a huge fan of that. And I've been talking to people that work at Psyonix for years and years at this point. We've talked about past products. We've talked about this product. We've talked about products that are not out yet. I want to see Psyonix win. So I'm also a little bit biased towards this product. And then um, the Hoplite Industries product is developed not by a company, but a guy named Matt who lives in New Zealand. And we have mutual friends because I used to live in New Zealand. Uh, we've talked about this technology for a while. Um, he's come over to my house for dinner and played with my kids in the backyard with night vision. So I'm biased a little bit toward this device and I want Matt to win as well. Dedicated citizen defense industry guy wanting to build capabilities for you. This is a world that I'm pretty deeply invested in personally. Um, so I maybe am just biased toward night vision in general. Maybe I'm a little bit too far into the weeds uh, when it comes to the digital and analog side, which is where you come in. Before I run a bunch of tests that uh, I wanna do, I need to hear from you guys. What is it that you are specifically looking for when it comes to night vision devices? What do you specifically want to accomplish? And what are the tests that would help you guys out? What do we actually need to figure out about these devices for you? So that, this is where you come in. I, I'm probably a little bit too deep in this world and I want your input on the tests that we need to do on these devices. I want to hear about some of your actual applications that you're curious about. Questions that you have about these devices based on previous reviews that we've done, and I'm gonna do the tests that you guys want within reason, of course. So I've got a, a new optical test bench here that these things clip into, so we can really easily set these things up side by side and uh, make sure that they're under the exact same conditions. And then uh, I've also got some 3D printed mounts for GoPros. Uh, these are very carefully set up so that we get exactly the centered and distance offsets that we need so that with identical 
settings on the cameras, we should be able to get exactly the same results from all of these things. Another thing that I want to do is test the frequency response of all these devices. Uh, as you know, one of the advantages that digital sensors have over analog sensors is they can see further into that infrared spectrum. They can see out of band frequencies and light. So we're gonna test some of those directly, but we're also gonna set up some different IR LEDs and just see how far into the spectrum each of these things can actually see. But before we start on those tests, I want your input for the specific things that you are wanting to find out and the things that you want answered. This is what next week's video is gonna be. These tests, and your suggestions. And then we're gonna talk a little bit more about what comes next for digital night vision because it's obvious that uh, we've squeezed a huge amount of performance out of some of these sensors and they are still unable to compete with 100 year old tube technology. I mean, Gen 3 night vision's not 100 years old, but the underlying cathode ray tube technology is. This is just so amazing that there needs to be something else to give digital night vision that step up. Obviously, we can feed other sensors into these things like uh, thermal cores. We can combine information the way that we can on that, uh, that mirror. So there's a whole bunch of things that can come to digital night vision, but the next big step that will improve the performance is artificial intelligence. You're not surprised by that. Everything is supposed to be uh, made better by AI at this point. Washing machines, refrigerators, but the advances that AI tools actually bring to digital night vision may be significant and possibly game changing. So all of that is coming in next week's episode, but I'm relying on you guys to help me know what are the tests that we really need to perform. Uh, the optics tests, what kind of distortion there are, the field of view. Let me know what your actual use cases would be for something like a $1,200 device with lower performance, but full color and uh, a lot more ruggedness uh, versus the analog night vision. And same with the opposite. What are the things that you want tested and figured out about that? Um, I, I really wanna make sure that we are addressing more than just is this thing great at shooting targets when we're running at speed and the basic test where we look through the thing and then tell you guys what it looks like. To some extent, there's still gonna be a little bit of that because the analog night vision, again, it's so different. It's so different to the eye. Putting a GoPro behind here is the worst possible way to show off what it is and how it works, but it's better than nothing, especially for you two. The other thing that is really gonna affect the adoption of digital is the availability of tubes. Uh, we can talk about this more next week, but L3 has stopped selling tubes to civilians. Now, you probably haven't noticed this yet because a lot of the people like Nocturnality already have a stock of L3 tubes that they're currently working through. But eventually, that supply is gonna run out. Prices of those really nice L3 tubes is gonna go up. Elbit will take over. There's other manufacturers doing stuff. There's a whole bunch of really nice looking Gen 2 Plus tubes coming out on the market, actually. Um, so that is an area where things are shifting and changing. It isn't just the prices going up. Actual supplies are running low. People may be forced to adopt digital night vision before the technology is completely fully baked. And so some of these tests might also help us figure out what are the areas where we have to work around uh, the weaknesses before they get fully solved by AI, because AI solves everything. Uh, maybe the YouTube algorithm will like this video better when we've complimented AI. <laughs>